For number 1, you first need to subtract 17.3 from both sides. When you subtract 17.3 from both sides, you have x equals negative 22. Answer to number 1 is negative 22. For number 2, you subtract 21.8 from both sides. And you have negative g equals negative 12.3. Because g is negative, you need to divide. It's really a negative 1g. Divide by negative 1, so g is positive. Divide the other side by negative 1. When you have negative 12.3 divided by negative 1, you have it become a positive 12.3. So the answer to number 2 is 12.3. For number three, we need to set up an equation. So we have the number of infielders on a baseball team is one less than three times the number of pitchers. If there are 11 infielders, how many pitchers are there? So we know that there are the number of infielders on a baseball team is equal is one less than three times the pitcher. So three times the pitcher is minus one. Then we can plug in, that would be our equation, then we can plug in the information that we know, we should know that there is 11 infielders. So we have 11 for i equals 3p minus 1. You add 1 to the right side and you add 1 to the left side and you have 12 equals 3p. If you divide each side by 3, you have that p equals 4. Number 4 is kind of tricky. So three children each had the same amount of money in their savings account. One of the children withdrew a quarter of her money and spent it all on a $25 t-shirt. What was the total amount of money originally in the accounts? So I, how I thought about it is that one of the children spent a quarter of her money, all of it, on a $25 t-shirt. So the equation she spent a quarter and X is the money on a $25 t-shirt, a quarter of all of her money. So multiply both sides by 4 over 1, the reciprocal, and they cancel out common factors, and x equals $100. So the amount of money that she started out with was $100. But the question asks how much money was originally in the accounts when all this there are three children. So you have to times 100 by 3, and you have that there was a total of $300 originally in the account. So your answer is 300. For question five, we divide each side by 2.9 to get A by itself. We have that 11.6 divided by 2.9 is four. So the answer to number five is four. Number six is also very similar to that. You divide each side by 3.1, negative 3.1. So you have u by itself. And the answer, answer to six, when you divide 7.75 divided by negative 3.1 is negative 2.5. So the answer to number six is negative 2.5. You also do the same thing for number 7. Divide by negative 3.7 on both sides to get x by itself. Then you have that x equals negative 8. What do you do? 29.6 divided by negative 3.7. Number 8 is a little bit trickier. You need to multiply each side by negative 9 over 4, which is the reciprocal. And you do the same to the other side, negative 9 over 4. Now you have that x equals, and you can find common factors between 16 over 27 and negative 9 over 4. Be 4 and 1. And you can do the same with the 27 and the negative 9, which would be 1 and 3. So you have x equals negative 4 over 3, which is the same 
as negative 1 and 1 third. For number 9, you can first divide this by negative 3, both sides, so you can get x minus 5 by itself. So you have x minus 5 equals 18 divided by negative 3, which is negative 6. You can add 5 to both sides to get x by itself. Then you know that x equals negative 1. So the answer to number 1, or number 9, is negative 1. Number 10 is a two-step equation. So you first need to subtract 2.3 from both sides. So you have 6m equals negative 12. Then you need to get m by yourself, m by itself, which is being multiplied by 6. So you divide by 6, and you have that m equals negative 2. So the answer to number 10 is negative 2. For number 11, you subtract 5.8 from both sides. You have that negative 2p equals two point two negative two point two to get p by itself you need to divide both sides by negative two and then p equals a positive one point one the answer to number eleven is one point one for number twelve you first need to add seven to both sides you have x over four equals 5. You multiply by the reciprocal, the common factor there, both 1. You multiply by 4 over 1. This is basically saying 5 over 1. Then you know that x equals 5 times 4, which is 20. The answer to number 12 is 20. For number 13, you are trying to combine the x's so you can get the x's on one side and the 6 on the other side. So what I would do is I would subtract 2x from both sides. So then on one side I have 6, and on the other side I have negative 6x with the variable. To get x by itself, I divide each side by negative 6, and I have that x equals negative 1. So the answer to number 13 is negative 1. I would do the same thing for problem number 14, try and get the x's together and try and get the other numbers with that don't have the variables together. So I would add 17 to this side. So I would have x equals 2x plus 20. Then I would subtract 2x from this side. So I have negative x equals 20. Divide by negative 1 because we want x to be positive, And I have x equals negative 20. For number 15, I want to combine the numbers that with variables and the numbers that do not have variables. So I'm going to first add 14x to this side. And I'm going to subtract 21 from this side and subtract 21 from the other side. So on this side I have 8x equals negative 32. Divide each side by 8 to get x by itself. And you have x equals negative 4. So number 16 wants you to express an equivalent equation for each equation. So what you need to do is you need to subtract 9 from each side and you have negative 3x equals 15 and that would be your equivalent equation. For number 17 you need to first multiply by the reciprocal. So you multiply 5 twelfths by its reciprocal which is 12 over 5 and you need to do the same to the other side. So now you have x minus 5 equals, you can find the common factor between 30 and 5, which is 6 and 1. And you have x minus 5 equals 72. And that would be your equivalent equation. 
So for solving each inequality, I first need to subtract 6 from each side. And I have y is greater than 14. That would be my answer. And now I need to graph that. I would have a circle open on the 14 because it's not does not have a greater than or equals to. And y has to be greater than 14, so I need to move in the direction to the right for numbers that will be greater. For number 19, I add 11 to the left side to make that 0, and I add 11 to the right side, and I have w is less than or equal to 14. So that would be what I would put here. And then how would I graph it? So I would put a closed circle on 14. And all my numbers, w is either going to be less than or equal to 14, so I need to move my arrow to the left because the numbers will be smaller or equal to 14. For number 20, I need to divide by 5 on both sides because I want to get k by itself. And I have that k is greater than or equal to negative 9. So then I'm looking to do this on, for graphing, I have k greater than or equal to 9. So I have circle on 9 filled in because it has that equal to with the inequality. And then I'm going to have k is going to be greater than negative 9, which means it's got to move to the right because the bigger numbers are going to be to the right. For number 21, I need to divide by negative 2. And when I divide by negative 2, I have to flip the sign. So now q is going to be greater than 17. So that would be my inequality. And I would have an open circle on 17. And the q is going to be greater than 17, so I need to point my arrow in the direction of the numbers that are going to be bigger than 17. For number 22, I need to multiply by negative 1 over 1. They will cancel out and, cancel and multiply 7 by negative 1. And because I multiplied by a negative number, I have to flip the sign. So now it's going to be p is less than negative 7. Write that down over here. And I would put an open circle on negative 7. And p is going to be less than negative 7, so the arrow needs to go to the left because p has to be less than negative 7. Number 23 is going to be a two-step equation. So I first need to subtract 5 from each side. So I have b over 3 is less than or equal to negative 3. Then I multiply this side by its reciprocal, the b over 3, multiply it by 3 over 1, common factor, those cancel out and they're each 1, and I multiply this side by 3 over 1. So I have b is less than or equal to negative 9. I would draw a closed circle on negative 9 because it has the equal to, less than or equal to, and b would have to be less than or equal to negative 9, so my arrow would need to point to the left, to the smaller numbers.